What's up everyone, this is the 2021 BMW X3 xDrive 30i. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, shall we? Looking at the front of the car, we have these headlights here, and down here are some fog lights. And this is interesting, so this plastic piece is just, you know, it's just here for fashion. But there's sensors here, and there's some more over here, and more over here going along the front of the car. Now, the front of the car is, there's a lot of plastic, so this is plastic, this is all plastic. This is plastic. This, this, this. Basically the whole front is plastic. And if you look at the grill, these are actually closed. So the engine is not getting any ventilation through this grill. It's actually all closed, which is very interesting. And I can probably fit to my whole head in here, so the grills are pretty big. They're definitely not the same as the new 3 and 4 series where the grills are like super big, but it looks, it looks nice in my opinion. But yeah, that's the front. Looking at the side of the car, the form looks pretty nice. Now, if we look at the wheels here, these are the 18-inch Y-spoke standard wheels. So you get 18-inch wheels. And we have this here. Now, check this out. This is fake. There's... I can't put my hand through it. It's literally sealed off, just like the grill. So there's no real ventilation going on there. As I mentioned in my other videos, this silver lining here means that this is the standard model. It doesn't have the sport package. I guess M Sport package for this specific model. So that's why that looks silver. If it was black, then you'd know that it has the M Sport package. The mirrors have automatic folding. So if I lock the car, they will fold. And then if I unlock the car, they will unfold. So this car has a convenience package. So the comfort axis allows me to unlock the car. And I can also tap here to lock the car. That's actually an option still in 2021. It's not standard. All right, so look at the back of the car. We have a small window here. It's not that big, but you can still see through it. And BMW has the xDrive 30i here. This is their new naming scheme. They have like the 30i on the side. And right here you can see a backup camera, which is thankfully standard. Down here we have the PDC sensors and we have more fake plastic pieces here for the rear bumper. So one of the cool things about this is it has the automated tailgate. So I just press that, opens automatically. And then up here we have the standard BMW buttons to lock the trunk and to close it. It does not have soft close. It literally just slams shut. There's no like soft close on the trunk. For trunk space, it's pretty standard size for cars of this size. You have this little privacy thing here. So when you close the trunk, people can't really see what's in here, which is nice. Then you have a little net here, and yeah, this is it. This is pretty much it. The seats all go down, which is nice. And then down here, you have your more area for other stuff. There's no spare tire as far as I know on a car like this. All right, so let's go ahead and look inside the car now, shall we? All right, so this is the door. And as you can see, we got our little fake plastic wood trim here. We have the X symbol here to signify this is a BMW X series. And if you look here, we have the lock and unlock buttons and the seat memory here now, away from BMW's older designs. And the buttons are also no longer the same as BMW's old design. So we have pretty much the same buttons you would in a BMW. Put all the windows down, lock the windows. This folds the mirrors manually. Control and this button here will open the trunk. So if I press this, open the trunk. We also have a little cubby hole down here. And check this out. You can fit a hydro flask. Well, at least this size. But yeah, pretty nice pocket here for drinks, which is good. All right, let's look at the rest of the car. Here we have some seat adjustments. So, pretty basic. You have your standard forward and back. And then you have the, you know, seat going forward and back. And then you got your lumbar support and stuff here. So it doesn't have too many seat options. I believe you need to buy the premium package to get the other ones or executive package. Then here, you can press this button to move this forward or back. The seats are leather. This is the, this has the Sensatec. So the seats are leather and other surfaces are synthetic or a mix. And yeah, this is the interior. All right, and over here we have the instrument cluster. So if I turn on the car, I'm just not, as you can see, this is how it looks. So you have a little digital display at the bottom. Well, I guess most of the display is digital in a way, but the real LCD is at the bottom. 
and you have your gas at the left, temperature at the right, like always, and then the ready and the off is for the auto off function, which I hate, but you can turn it off right here. So this is to turn off the auto off. And then here we have a display, which isn't that big. So this display is pretty small, but it's touchscreen, which is nice. So you can, you know, use a touchscreen. All right, so looking at the rest of the car, this is the overall layout. So you have the X3 little badge right there, and then this little rubberized compartment here. You can put sunglasses, your cup holders. You have a 12 volt socket here. You have a USB port right there. And then just general storage right here. Let's talk about these controls. So if you've owned the BMW before, you normally know that BMW has not only the but the dials to open and close events, but they also have the hot and cold dial here. They don't have that in these newer cars. And as you can see, the buttons are now, well, they're like silver, but yeah. So there's good things and bad things about this design. The good thing is these should not fade out like the original F series and the other BMWs, the E, e series as well, where these fade out from like people using like hand sanitizer, lotions and whatnot and touching their car. The bad thing is I'm not too much of a fan of the way this looks. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I definitely like the older look better. And this is the digital display here for your climate controls. Now at nighttime, this does change colors. Thank you BMW for keeping that nice amber color at night. And just to go over a few things that this has. So you have your heated seats. This has heated seats. It does not have cool seats and that's not an option. You have your direction. So you can do your feet, front, top, whatnot. You know, you have your dials here to change temperature. And then you have your synchronized button. And here's a menu button. So let's take a look at this. If you click menu, it actually changes the menu on the iDrive to show you the climate section so you can change a few things here, which is pretty cool. Another thing that's gone is the lock button. So normally there's a lock slash unlock button in this area. We now we have the warning triangle and we have this button to show us the safety features. You can turn them on and off from here. Coming down to the car, we have the shifter. It's um, very similar to the previous generation. And we have our parking brake, which is also digital. So everything here looks pretty familiar if you had a BMW before. And then down here are our buttons. So we can do Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. So when you, let's say you click Sport. So if you look at the display, it does, mine says Comfort because I was in Sport. So you do Sport. And then down here, the colors also change a little bit to, you know, you have Eco is blue. Comfort is like white, and then sport is red because red is fast. And then we have our iDrive controller he here. It's uh, this isn't like super big compared to some of the other ones, but there's that. All right, so up here you have your little mirror with the light, and then here's one of the nice things that I wish my M6 had. If you do this, you can actually extend these. I know that sounds really weird me praising this feature because a lot of cars like you know Toyota Honda and stuff already had this for a while but my 2017 M6 doesn't have that and then you have your handles here that's a microphone which is a very nice location you have your lights here they're pretty bright at night during the daytime they're not that bright and then you can turn them on and off there you go now they're pretty bright since this car does have the package I mentioned earlier if you do this you can open the panoramic sunroof so the panoramic sunroof is basically large it looks nice i like it then of course right here we have our storage so that's it's decent size you have a usb type c which is awesome and then that's basically it there's no aux in these cars because in 2021, you should be using Bluetooth since most phones don't even have aux nowadays. This is the dashboard. Um, this is a 3 series, so it's not like super high quality. And then right here is the glove box. So it's, it's, it's pretty compact, honestly, for a car of this size. And then you can see the ambient lighting right here. We'll take a look at that at nighttime so you can see it better. Some right there, too. One thing I did want to mention is about the speaker system. 
So this has the base audio, and as far as I know, when I tried configuring the vehicle, there is no premium audio. And to be fair, in 2021, you expect a car to sound pretty good. The audio in here is okay, but I did I do wish that they had like some sort of more premium option because it doesn't sound as nice as the other BMWs I've you know I have like the 7 series and the M6 even the E60 sounds better. All right, looking at the back door, it's very really similar to the front. You have nice large cup holder there, your window button, handle and the ambient lighting with the wood trim. So let's talk about the back space because what separates a mini SUV from a car should be the back seat, right, in the trunk. So the back seat, there's a lot more room than the 3 Series. That's kind of what separates this from the 3 Series, right, is you have more room in the back. So this seat is pretty far back. It can go more. This one this one is pretty much all the way back, and you get to see how much room there is. Um, you know, lots of space here. Now, three people can sit in the back, and if I switch to the middle seat, this is way more comfortable sitting like this in here than it is in the 3, 5 series and whatnot. 7 series, L, the LI might be a little bit more comfortable, I think. But other than that, it's, it's pretty comfortable. If you sit in the middle, it sucks because it's very hard. It's not as soft as these seats. It's like, like stiff. So it's kind of, you know, if you ever sit in the middle, you get screwed every time no matter which car you're in, basically. If you're wondering where the feet air conditioning is, it's actually under these seats. So that's pretty cool. And then of course, thank you for two USB type C's in the back, a very nice BMW. So if you have no one in the back, typical BMW, you push this down and there we go. They all fold up. So you can press it and bring it up. So when you're sitting down, you know, you do this. And then when no one's there, you just push it in and it comes back down. Which reminds me, in the middle we have our armrest. It's kind of weird because it's at this angle, it doesn't go down all the way. But yeah, and then here we have our regular size cup holders. Classical BMW using cheap plastic in some areas. And then here, if we press this, like I said earlier, the seats, all the seats go down. So you can, you know, have this if you want like a ski pass thing. And then here we have anchors for the child seats. So there's anchors on both sides of the seats. There's not one in the middle. And then there's, of course, three seat belts. And then the back we have our lights, so you can turn these on and off. And they're manually controlled. So there's one here in the back. You can turn it off or you can have that one off. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the hood, shall we? The engine is two liters turbo, and it has 248 horsepower. All right, so when you put the car in reverse, you have your backup camera, and it shows you the trajectory lines and everything. There's PDC as well, so basically, it's it's pretty accurate. The line here is pretty accurate. Now, there's no this car doesn't have the package where it shows you the 360 the surround view option, which is an option if you do get it. You get like the double picture one that shows you all around the car. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have that. All right, so overall, the ride on the car is pretty smooth, which is typical of BMW. Now, I'm gonna put this in sport mode, and hopefully there's no cops around. So I'm just gonna gun this. Now, it's a four-cylinder turbo with 248 horsepower, but it has a nice kick to it, which is really nice. For a car like this that's this big, it has a pretty good acceleration. So if you want to have fun with the car, you know, you can just step on it anytime and have that fun feeling. So one of the things I want to talk about are the safety features here. There's a pedestrian warning system, which I'm probably not going to show you guys right now until later. There is the frontal collision warning, the lane departure warning, and the blind spot detection. So blind spot will be the easiest to show y'all. All right, so let's see if we can get the front collision warning device to come up. There's the, no, it's not gonna come up. Of course it's not gonna come up. I don't know how BMW does it, but their warning systems are very accurate. It is so hard for me to try and force these things to come on. Like they literally come on when it, when I, when I expect it to come on, like when I'm actually gonna like hit someone, if I'm not paying attention. But for some reason I'm trying to show y'all, it doesn't wanna come up. 
So the way the lane departure works is the steering wheel has a vibrator inside of it. So if I'm out of my lane, like if I drift to, let's say, the middle lane, it will vibrate. So it's hard to show you all that. But if you go into the vehicle settings and I go into the steering wheel vibration, you can see here that you have an option to make it light, medium, and strong, depending on like what preference you like. So if I'm out of my lane, basically the whole steering wheel will will vibrate telling me like, hey, you're not in your lane. All right, so in conclusion, the car as configured is around $45,000 MSRP. There are many options out there, such as from Honda and Toyota that are cheaper. I will say that, but if I was just to talk about this car by itself, I know I said that there's a lot of plastics on it, but to be completely fair to BMW, most manufacturers are doing this on all of the new cars with the fake vents, and all this other stuff um, on the inside of the car it doesn't really I don't really feel that same experience on the inside the inside feels nice you know and I really like the iDrive system and it literally it literally feels just like the 3 series just bigger so if you've ever driven a 3 series before this car will seem pretty familiar to you now I do recommend to get the executive package don't get a basic model you know having the live cockpit pro having all the uh, on-screen display, all those extra functions are actually pretty useful in everyday driving, at least in my opinion. But anyways, this was my first BMW SUV that I've ever driven, and I like it. It's really similar to all the other cars, so they all have this similar feel to them. So if you've ever driven any modern BMW series, especially the 3 Series, because I've driven the 3 Series on this one, they're very similar. Handling's pretty good. It's a bit pricey, but it is a BMW, so just wait two years to buy it pre owned It'll be like... A quarter of the price. Maybe half, not a quarter. Anyways, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.